How's everybody doing today? My name is Nick from NickWilt.com and today's video is going to be a little walkthrough slash tutorial on my process for editing infrared images using Affinity Photo. So I've talked at length before about my process for editing and shooting infrared images over on my blog which is NickWilt.com. I'll make sure to post links to these posts in the video's description. And as a result, I'm able to come up with images that look like this right here which are kind of these surreal false color images of different uh, nature and foliage as you can see right here. So these two images were taken roughly a couple seconds apart from one another and they're both images of a lilac bush that are outside of my house. And now naturally you might be thinking that lilac bushes are green not white or red. And that's just an example of the thing that you can accomplish using these infrared images. So these images are basically made by taking a regular camera sensor and modifying it so that it can shoot in a different spectrum of light. I personally use a camera that was modified by services at lifepixel.com and I personally use the Supercolor IR filter that's right down here. And as a result of using these techniques, you can come up with a whole world of different pictures such as maybe this right here, uh, green, uh, bushes that end up being pink and you can do a whole bunch of different stuff with all of these false colors. Now for the past couple of years I have been using Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom to edit these images and as part of me trying to distance myself from Adobe subscription based models I've been looking for some alternatives and I've recently been trying my hand at editing these photos using Affinity Photo and that's what we're gonna try and do today. Day. So I have a couple different test images that we have right over here. These are the official, or I shouldn't say official, these are just the raw images from what I've shown you before. And we're going to take those and we're going to do some magic with them in order to come out with something that looks really neat. And this is going to be just a general outline of my process. It's not really intended to be a step-by-step -step tutorial. If you feel like following along with an image that you have, that's great. If you just feel like watching to be entertained, that's fine too. And if you have no interest in it, then go watch something else. But let's pick an image to work with. I think I'm going to try, let's try that, let's try this one right here. And as I open that up, it opens us up into the develop module of Affinity Photo. So as you can see right here, the raw image directly out of the camera has this kind of blue cast to what was once the green foliage right here. And that's specifically a result of the white balance settings that I've done when I shot the original image. I did a custom white balance on my camera and that came out to something that looks like this. If you're interested to looking at what a raw image from the infrared cameras look like, they come out to like something that looks like this with this red cast right down here and you can fix that simply by changing the white balance settings in camera. So this is the raw image from the camera and this was actually taken around like two o'clock in the afternoon looking at a bright blue sky and it's actually really interesting how the different spectrums of light make the images look. So in the develop module right here I'm just gonna play with my settings so I think we're gonna maybe up the exposure a little bit more and I'm definitely going to increase the black point right here because I want the sky to be a lot darker and not have this kind of ugly yellow cast to it. So we're gonna leave it right around there. Maybe I'll add some brightness settings. I'll add in a little bit more contrast and maybe a little bit more clarity in order to do something like that. And one of the things I really like about Affinity Photo are these different these different view modes that are up here where you can do a before and an after. So we have before, after. It's already starting to look cool. So we can't really do too much more with this image in the develop module, so I'm just going to click on develop. And that's going to develop our image and bring us back out to the default Affinity Photo editor. Now once we're here, in our layers panel and our adjustments panel we have quite a few different things that we have to do in order to transform this image. So the first thing that I always do when editing an infrared photo is I go down to the channel mixer right down here and I have a specific preset right here for IR conversion and one of the main things that you have to do in order to edit an infrared photo is you have to swap the color channels out in order to match the color 
of the image. Since this image isn't really shot in visible light, it requires different channels in order to get things done correctly. So under the red channel right here, where the red value is at 100%, I'm going to change that to 0% and then change the blue value to 100% and we're then going to swap the same thing for the blue channel. So in the blue channel, where the red value says zero, we're gonna change that to 100, and where the blue value says 100, we're gonna change that to zero. And instantly, as you can see here, if I go to my layers panel, the before image has this kind of strange blue cast to it, and then the after image has kind of this yellowish cast to it. And this is essentially the beginning of how we're going to be able to achieve these really interesting false colors. So after the channel mixer, the next thing that I like to do is change the white balance of my image. And this is where it's essentially key to getting the main effect that you want, because you need to focus on whether or not you want your leaves or your foliage to be white or some other color. And that's where the white balance comes into play. If I click on my white balance picker right here, I can change it by clicking on multiple different parts in the image. So for example, if I want it to be really yellow, I could click that part. If I click the sky, it'll do the same. And we can play with a whole bunch more settings. But I think this time I want the images to be of a, a yellowish color. And we'll make sure to change the white balance and show a little example for what it would be like if we wanted to do it on the white side. Because as you can see here with these two images, one being red and one being white, the main thing that took that changed this image into this image and vice versa was the white balance. And so we're just going to play around with this in the yellow setting right now. I, I think I think that's a good white balance for what I want to do because I think I want to change this to being some kind of really really awesome color. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our hue and saturation and individually we're going to change all of the different color channels in order to come out with something really neat. So I'm going to change the red and that actually kind of looks almost like it was when I shot the actual picture. So we're going to move over. Should I make it green? No. Why not keep it like there? Maybe we'll increase saturation just a little bit. Do I want it? That's about good. And now we're going to mess with the yellow. So maybe we'll change it to like a different color. I want it to contrast with this color up here. So maybe we'll make that red and we'll keep this purple. That's looking good. Now I doubt there's very many greens to mess around with. And wouldn't you know it, there's not many. What about some cyans? That mainly messes with the background. So we won't really do too much. What about blues? Blue kind of messes with the sky a little bit, so we'll keep it to roughly around there. Not really too much to work with. And our magentas. There we go. I'll play with the master setting one more time just to see what we can come up with. I'll darken it up a little like that. And as you can see, just with the hue saturation effect, it's completely changed uh, the image from looking like this yellow blotch of kind of a muddy color that we don't really like too much to a very vibrant contrast between red and purple. Now, in order to play around a little bit more, we could further modify these by clicking on color balance. So let's see if we can modify the color balance of the shadows. Maybe if we do this, that will raise up our reds a little bit more. We'll add a little bit more magenta in there too. And we'll do that. I'll change my highlights. Once again, we'll add in a little bit more red. Maybe a little bit more green. And yeah, I kind of like the way that looks. We'll change the midtones a little bit. And this is just a lot of fine tuning. You could spend hours changing these settings, but I'm just going to kind of rush through them. And I'm going to go through and maybe add in a curves adjustment too, just to get some of our tones better. I want a little bit more in there. And that looks pretty good. And so I'm going to call that 
good for our final image. So if I just hide all of these layers, we can go back and we can trace our steps. So we start from the beginning, and then we go for our channel mixer, changing our white balance, changing our color values, adjusting them with the color balance, and then final curves adjustments. And then we have an image that looks like that. And I actually want to save that because that looks really cool. And we're going to change that. Second version. There we go. And while I'm at it, I'll export that too because that's a really nice take on that picture that I didn't do the first time. All right, and that's one way to do it. Now, if I wanted to change these colors to be kind of on the white side, like I had right over here, I would simply just mess around with those settings until I get something that looks around like that. So I would probably change the white balance up a little bit, change some of my values towards the blues a little bit more. And it really just goes to show you how how finicky this can be. Like, there's a million different settings that can turn any particular image into something that looks completely different. And that's essentially what I find beautiful about this. It's really an art form that requires just a lot of messing around. And so I wanted to use that essentially as like a little walkthrough on some of my process. Again, I apologize if this was me just kind of rambling and not so much an actual tutorial, but I wanted this to be kind of like a, a visual representation or a visual walkthrough of some of the techniques that I've shown off in these posts on my website. If you've made it this far through the video, uh, congratulations you get a virtual cookie. So thank you all for watching. I hope you all at least enjoyed this somewhat. Uh, if you have any more questions or anything else you want to see, feel free to send them over in the comments down below. And feel free to stop over by nickwilt.com to see some of my other different examples of my work with the infrared and everything else related to photography. So thank you all again for watching. My name is Nick from nickwilt.com, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.